It was a coldish winter Wednesday in November. There was nothing remarkable about this day when it started, but it would end very, very differently. The sun had set over Delhi and people were going about their usual business. Markets were bustling with activity, people were getting home from their work, pressure cookers were going off as pleasant smells of dinner wafted through the windows. Political nerds like me were kind of excited on this day. Halfway across the world in America, a mega election had just happened and results had started pouring in. A loudmouth reality TV star called Donald Trump was gaining ground against Hillary Clinton, a former secretary of state and veteran politician. A very bizarre campaign had led to this moment in America as people around the world were waiting for the results of the 58th presidential elections to be declared. In India, the clock struck 8 p.m. and a man appeared on television. News channels that were tuned to this very exciting election in America suddenly switched to show Prime Minister Narendra Modi. This was an emergency announcement and nobody had a single clue what was about to happen. To break the grief of corruption and black money, we have decided that the 500 rupee and 1000 rupee currency notes presently in use will no longer be legal tender from midnight to night. Persons holding old notes of 500 or 1000 rupees can deposit these notes in their bank or post office account from 10th November till close of banking hour on 30th December 2016 without any limit. There may be some who, for some reason, are not able to deposit their own 500s or 1000 rupees notes by 30th December 2016. They can go to specific office of the Reserve Bank of India up to 31st March 2017 and deposit the notes after submitting a declaration form. Uh, sorry, wh what did you say? Can you, can you say that again? We have decided that the 500 rupee and 1000 rupee currency notes presently in use will no longer be legal tender from midnight to night. Don't know about you, but that confused the f out of me. I was returning from office and my first instinct was should I withdraw some cash? I looked at my wallet and I had some thousand odd rupees in it. Then I looked up to see a crowd outside an ATM, people jostling to withdraw cash. Clearly, I was also not the only one who was confused either because what was the point of withdrawing cash from the ATM? It would just spit out old cash. Old worthless cash, which was just made worthless by a bearded man appearing on television. Seriously, what the actual f was happening? This was the point when it kind of hit me. The money in my pocket was just worthless pieces of paper at this point of time. The money in everybody's pocket was worthless. An entire country was in a matter of minutes robbed of their cash just like that. Surely this can't be legal, right? I I mean, it, it, it's weird. So I got a call from my landlord the next morning. Ha bhaiya, uh, listen, I am going to come tomorrow and give you back the rent that you paid for the last three months, okay? You deposit all of that in your bank account, withdraw new cash and then give it to me. Cool? Cool. Okay, bye. Take care. Also, I might kick you out if you if you don't do this. Bye, bye. He cut the call and I was like, seriously, what the f*** is happening? That man literally dropped off 75,000 rupees in cash that day right into our laps. I had already withdrawn that month's rent only two days before that. Now we were supposed to give him a lakh in new cash or face eviction, I guess. What is happening even? How is this even possible? What am I supposed to do with all this money? And what if I get caught? I suddenly have 1 lakh rupees in black money and Modiji is going to come after me for this? Is 
this what life is going to be like now i am a criminal just for holding cash and i might be homeless as well soon and what the actual f is happening Hello friends welcome to another episode of Modi Review we are on this long ass journey to document shri sir adarniya supreme leader shri narendra modi ji and his government and what it has done since 2014 this is episode 3 in case you didn't see the ones before this do check them out because those have context that you might need to enjoy this one better up to you friends again don't let anyone tell you what to do you do you this episode as you might have guessed is about narendra modi's biggest blunder demonetization or as they call it in hindi land note bandi 8th of november 2016 was the day when modi set in motion the biggest economic disaster the likes of this world has probably never seen we are sitting here in 2023 the 7th anniversary of demonetization just went by without causing any ripples and there's a reason for that I feel like a lot of us have forgotten what madness ensued during those two fateful months in 2016. A lot of you new voters watching this video might have been like 12 13 years old when it happened, so you might not really remember the details of how absolutely batshit crazy it was. Worry not, Meghan Nerd is here and I am here to fill those gaps in your brain today. And for the rest Enjoy this nostalgic feeling of being a part of an absolute train wreck, a deliberate train wreck that was executed by one of the most dimwit government we have had till date. Demonetization marks a turning point in our democracy where an illusion was sold to all of us and we became kind of deluded as masses. These masses then started worshiping Modi for causing their own misery. It caused a lot of suffering. You suffered, I suffered, we all suffered. It's time to recall and relive that trauma. Okay, so 8th of November, Beard Man comes on TV and says that 500 and 1000 rupee notes will be invalid from midnight. 4 hours later, that was 86% of the circulating currency, meaning 86% of the money in Indian hands became invalid. Over 100 lives were lost, suicide spiked, millions of jobs just disappeared, and a lot of chaos ensued in general. We'll get to all that later, but I wanted to start this story with the dude who came up with this uh joke. Yeah, I'm not going to call it a economic strategy, policy or idea because honestly, it does sound like a bit of a joke when you tell it to someone who has no context. Are you know what happened? So, dude comes on TV and says the money in my pocket is worthless. It's just worthless. I mean, seriously. I mean, my money. Can you imagine? 86% of all currency in the country just suddenly went poof like in 4 hours are you kidding me are you serious i mean where does this even happen anyway i'm sure kids of the future will laugh at this whole thing and turn it into multiple stand up comedy acts but for now let's look at the og comedian who came up with this premise for this joke his name is anil bokil and he describes himself as an economic theorist in reality he has a diploma in mechanical engineering from latur maharashtra he runs this organization called arthakranti which literally translates to economic revolution in an interview bokil was asked what is arthakranti proposal did you meet the prime minister to discuss your idea here's what he said I met Modi when he was still chief minister of Gujarat. He was nominated as the prime ministerial candidate and he was fairly confident about getting absolute majority at that time. 
he had given some 15 minutes time for us to make a presentation but after listening to me for over an hour he asked me what needs to be done for a complete overhaul of the indian economy we suggested that all taxes should be withdrawn and replaced with a single banking transaction tax btt the next step was to demonetize high value currency followed by taking away legal sanctity of high value cash transactions he wanted to know whether an action on currency demonetization should come first or an action on tax withdrawal for me currency demonetization is like an operation which can be carried out after giving anesthesia which is withdrawal of taxes modi carried out the operation without giving anesthesia and i believe it was warranted by some grave circumstances uh, okay first thing i hate it when people extend their 15 minute meetings to one hour meetings because i guess there's someone else waiting for you who will be very annoyed and then the person after that and then after that and then it just compounds and then your whole calendar is out of whack so don't do it also if you do operation on someone who is not under anesthesia that person will probably die very painfully yeah don't don't do that either modi ji bad bad bokel says that he suggested withdrawing all taxes first and then removing high value currency but modi just did the second thing because of some grave circumstances no clue what that is but i guess modi ji knows best modi ji ne kya hai to theek hai soch samajh ke kiya hoga yeah he must have done it thinking only When asked why we need demonetization, Bukil gave this logic: Going by the global poverty line of two dollars per day consumption, which means around one hundred and thirty rupees per day, seventy percent of Indian population is below poverty line. Then why do we need five hundred and one thousand rupee currencies? About eighty-six percent of the value of our currency is locked here. Let hundred rupees be the highest denomination. I've been trying to think this part through. for a while but honestly i don't get this logic if 70% indians earn less then there is no need for high value currency how does that work he does know that 70% indians will get paid for multiple days at once right the people who hire these poverty stricken indians will give them a weekly or a monthly wage which might be in cash because they might not have bank accounts and that would have to be in high value currency because otherwise it would be an absolute freaking nightmare imagine people running around with stacks of cash everywhere just because you've been paid for a week but yeah bokil gave the spiel to narendra modi and claims that modi bought it modi didn't even buy the entire idea he just bought the second part which is demonetization because after withdrawing 500 and 1000 rupee notes the government introduced notes of even a higher value 2000 rupees there is still no real explanation given for why this particular move was done except for the fact that they were not prepared for it and there was a shortage of cash so they had to do something in emergency and therefore 2000 rupees हजार रुपए कहा गए वेर इज दाउजेंड रुपीज इन दिडल नो आंसर नो नो आंसर एंड वॉट इफेक्ट वुड इट हैव ऑन आर ओवरऑल इकोनॉमी विच प्राइमरीली वर्क ऑन कैश ट्रांजेक्शन एंड वाई डू डिमोनिटाइजेशन एट ऑल आई चेक द अर्थ क्रांति वेबसाइट एंड गेस वॉट इट डजेंट एग्जिस्ट Worry not because the internet remembers. On web. archive, the last snapshot is from March 2023. The website went down some time after that. I found a post from November 10th, 2016, two days after demonetization, titled "Arth Kranti Suggestion for Transition Phase." It says to absorb sudden liquidity shortage in economy, special adequate numbered featured new 500,000 at 2,000 rupees currency notes. to be introduced in a calculated way 2000 rupees note to be introduced just to control the number of pieces and provide adequate value for transaction balancing these new notes are just a standby or stopgap adjustment and can be demonetized with
withdrawn after a smooth transition from the current cash-based non-transparent system to a well-banked transparent economy. As I record this, there has been a call from the government to withdraw 2000 rupee notes completely. Huge lines have been seen outside the RBI offices where people are trying to exchange their 2000 rupee notes. In lot of ways, we can say that this year the demonetization cycle has come full circle. The Bokil website further says demonetization will lead to the following benefits terrorist and anti national activities will be controlled motive for tax avoidance would be reduced corruption would be minimized significant growth in employment there are just these declarative statements and nothing else no reasoning no analysis no data to support any of these so called benefits or the fallout that happens after this and yet Narendra Modi seems to have bought it because why not right he is simple he is disruptive and it literally touches the lives of every single indian he would do something that will make us remember him forever and it doesn't matter whether there is any reasoning behind it because modi ji as we know likes to put on a giant show and oh boy did he put on a show this time i mean can't even like an amazing show here's what we are going to do i am going to take you through the most significant things that happened after 8 pm on november 8th 2016 one event at a time hold on to your hats because this is going to be quite a mind bending roller coaster ride 8th of november modi appears on tv and announces a ban on 500 and 1000 rupee notes he said people can deposit their old notes till december 31st with any bank and in case people can't do that they can deposit it in the rbi till march 31st deposits could be unlimited but the withdrawals would be limited to 10000 rupees a day and 20000 a week uh sorry to interrupt here but i just wanted to point out again that i had a lack in cash with me at that time and i was panicking like hell the landlord wanted a lakh in a month but the government was like you can only have 80k if you withdraw 20 every week holy shit what am i going to do was what i was thinking what the hell was that time really anyway he also introduced the 2000 rupee notes so any holder who was holding his hoard in 500 rupee notes will now need 1/4 the physical space to hold the same amount meaning my landlord would have an easier time carrying all this rent cash around tucked into his leather jacket on a bullet yes my landlord was quite cool if i may say so i mean nothing else but he was very cool november 13th as people lined up outside the banks to withdraw their own money the government probably realized that this was going to be a shit show So they casually increased the withdrawal limits from twenty thousand to twenty four thousand. They also removed the daily limit. Five days in, the policy had already changed, and yeah, this will happen a lot. Yeah, this will happen a lot. November seventeenth, withdrawal limits changed again. Farmers were allowed to withdraw twenty five thousand a week. Traders who work in mandis could withdraw fifty thousand a week. If you have a wedding in your home, you could get. Uh, 2 lakh 50 thousand rupees, but it could only be done by the parents of the person getting married or the person who was getting married themselves. So in all, girl and boy family combined, they could withdraw 5 lakh rupees in new cash. But wait, nine days since demonetization happened, something else also started happening, and I need to read this bit out from the finance ministry circular. At present, over-the-counter exchange of old 500 and 1000 rupee notes is limited up to a maximum of 4500 per person. Reports have been received that the same persons are going back to the counter again and again, thereby cornering the facility and depriving many other people from exchanging old notes. There are also reports of organized groups indulging in such practices to convert their black money into white. 
it has been decided to reduce this limit of exchange of 500 and 1000 rupee notes across the counter in banks from 4500 to 2000 this facility will be available only once per person november 25th government announced that the exchange of old notes with the new notes will stop completely Earlier, there was an over-the-counter exchange of old to new notes which was happening at banks. You know, there are people who don't have bank accounts, so for them. Modi, when he announced demonetization, had told people that they can exchange their currency till December 31st. Two weeks in, the government just put a halt to it. He kind of went back on his word. Now people could only deposit money in bank accounts and withdraw it from those accounts with limits in place. Nobody could exchange anymore. They did this because reports started emerging that bankers were using a backdoor to exchange money for special clients. When everywhere across the country there was a shortage of cash for the new notes, authorities were seizing stacks of cash in 2000 rupee notes amounting to crores. While this was happening, I made a crowdsourced database of reports with some other fellow nerds. And now I want to show you a montage. I'll leave a link to this database below for you to enjoy just so that you get an idea of what an absolute freaking shit show this whole thing had become. December 2nd, after demonetization was announced, the government had allowed payment through old currencies for certain categories. Petrol pumps, crematoriums, schools, government hospitals, ration stores, dairies and also ticket booking counters for both air and railways. But Three weeks in, they stopped that as well. All these establishments stopped accepting old cash. Finally, December 31st, government issues an ordinance declaring that the old notes will cease to be liabilities for the Reserve Bank of India (RBI) from December 31st, 2016 onward. Further, these notes will no longer be guaranteed by the central government. Okay. I know what you're thinking. What the hell is this? Cease to be liabilities? What does that even mean? That last one is where the entire demonetization story actually lies. And you know I'm going to tell it to you like you have never heard it before. I mean, this is the perfect nerd stuff that you are here to watch right now on this channel. To process all of this, you need a chiller head. So you know what that means.
हेलो हेलो वेलकम बैक मेंटल हेल्थ ब्रेक गाइज आई फील लाइक यू रियली नीड इट फॉर दिस वन इट वॉज अ माइंड बेंडिंग थिंग टू राइट दिस वन एज वेल बिकॉज आई वॉज रीलिविंग ऑल द मेमोरीज दैट आई हैव ऑफ दैट टाइम इट्स नॉट फन इट्स नॉट फन एंड दर इज अ लॉट मोर कमिंग थैंक यू सो मच फॉर वॉचिंग दिस बाय द वे लॉन्ग वीडियो आई नो this is a format that if you are if this is the first video you are watching on my channel this is a format that i'm exploring long form unhinged essay videos is what i call it i would really appreciate it if you become a member on this channel or just share this video further for anyone you want to give trauma to or make them remember what basically narendra modi has done and uh, i feel like it is worth it i feel like this video is worth sharing but yeah thank you so much for watching uh, please do support this channel uh, this is my bread and butter now so please do consider becoming a member i do live streams every week and you can come and chill with me and talk to me and ask me really really personal questions and i will answer them yes that's what i do now because ab bacha hi kya hai aur right that i no privacy anyway so yeah anyway what is what is the next chapter yes what is the next chapter it is chapter 3 chapter 3 chapter 3 friends chapter 3 coming right at you let me give it to you straight demonetization broke us not just our economy but it also broke our collective brains when the prime minister appeared on tv that day to announce how your money and my money and everybody's money is now worthless i can bet even the smartest person in india must have been like wait a minute can he do that i can go into legal territory and tell you more about that ordinance which i told you before the mental health break which invalidated the money that we had and how it did that but to get to that point i need you to wrap your head around the concept of money itself and if this is too basic for you and you're too smart for this then we have time codes and you can skip this chapter and go to the next one if you stay i assure you this is going to be worth it All right so money in simple words is a store of value let's say ramu grows wheat and shanta makes shoes so shanta and ramu can come to an agreement that one quintal of wheat is worth two pairs of shoes they can exchange those and be done with it next season the rate might change depending on how many people want shoes and how many people want wheat that's barter You must have heard about this before. I also want to insert another possibility in your head: gifts. Yes, it is possible to not have an exchange value and for a community to just work for, you know, the community which is everyone. Ramu can grow wheat for everyone, Shanta can make shoes for everyone, Pandu can be a handyman for everyone, Binod can run a warehouse where everyone can store stuff. this can potentially be a system too you know but anyway that's not the system we have stop stop getting distracted by utopia megna this is not utopia you live in the real world so money so it's kind of painful for shanta and ramu to renegotiate like this all the time instead they collectively decide to exchange made up pieces of paper which have standard value like an iou but without names on it like this piece of paper is worth 100 schnicklets and then both shoes and wheat can be compared with schnicklets 100 schnicklets can buy two pairs of shoes and one quintal of wheat now if someone wants two quintals they will give 200 schnicklets one pair of shoes that's 50 schnicklets that's the basic concept of money it's a store of value but there is another factor at work here trust The reason why this system works is because both Shanta and Ramu trust Schnicklets. Schnicklets. 
I just made up the word and I can't even pronounce it. They trust Schnickelets. Both of them agree that this is a store of value and they are okay with their products being assigned a value like this. It just makes everyone's life easier, so it's all good. If Shanta trusts Schnickelets and Ramu trusts Chicklets, which is a different currency, this system won't work unless there is a value established between Schnickelets and Chicklets. Right, now that we have established trust in Schnickelets, let's complicate this a little bit. Who produces the schnicklets? I mean, if Ramu and Shanta both have printers and they can just print schnicklets at will, then this whole system doesn't work. It just collapses. So there needs to be one authority that prints this currency and distributes it. That authority is King Bholenath the third. Bholenath, the richest fellow in the area, is the one printing these schnicklets and giving it to the people. It will have a unique seal, paper, make, and only Bholenath can produce it using his special printing press. Nobody else. Okay, yes, we are complicating this a little bit more. Whenever Bholenath gives out money, he makes an entry in the register saying, this is my liability. You see, the whole point of the schnicklets and why people trust it so much is because Bholenath guarantees that it has value. If Ramu and Shanta want, they can ultimately go to Bholenath, give him the schnicklets they have and extract something out of him. Like, I don't know, gold or land? Depends. Bholenath wrote in his register that he owes everyone with schnicklets. It's a liability for him. Okay, sorry, side note, but in real life, you can't actually go to the RBI and demand something in return for all the rupees that you have. That is a little more complicated. Uh, I'll have to tell you a little bit more about decoupling money from gold, banks creating credit out of thin air, which is basically imaginary money and all that, but I'm, I'm not going there right now. No stress. Okay, so recap. Money is a store of value. The value is guaranteed by an authority. The people who use the money trust that money has value. Now, what happens when Bholenath's nephew, Narendra, appears on TV at 8 p.m. on November 8th, 2016 and tells everyone that schnicklets are just worthless pieces of paper now. Shadi hai ghar pe? Tere shad, tere, tere, you, you have you have wedding at home haha <laughs> but you don't have money only lol lol because i said so aapko bhi pata hai ki achanak raat 8 tarikh ko raat ko 8 baje 500000 ki note घर में शादी है पैसे नहीं है what Modi managed to do is usurp the trust that people had put in the RBI through their money which guaranteed that the money in their pockets had value and placed it on himself he literally announced to the country that they should not trust their money anymore and everyone just agreed sure no no what this piece of paper nothing means nothing to me anymore it means nothing because modi ji said so okay think about it if let's say salman khan came on your tv and said that the money in your pocket does not matter would you believe him no you won't maybe some bhai fans will because bhai rocks but you won't you're smarter salman khan is not the authority who gets to decide this what if after demonetization happened you went to a market to buy a bottle of water gave the old notes and the shop owner just took it i mean if you and the shopkeeper both trust the currency and think of it as a store of value no matter what anyone else says it remains as a store of value. You know how people see Phatawa note and they're like, Sir, please give new note. Please give new note. Give new note. This is torn. Yeah. 
what if that person is okay with getting the tone note and the person that he gives it to is okay with getting the tone note and the person after that is also okay with getting the tone note all of these people still consider it as a store of value it doesn't matter if it's tone or not you see money is ultimately a concept which everybody has to agree on for it to work properly it is a story which everybody tells each other and believes in but when demonetization happened did anyone ask whether modi is allowed to do this is he the authority who can just destroy that trust or is it rbi the actual authority that prints the money which is supposed to do this can the rbi just one day get up and say ha ha this is not my liability anymore i am burning the register burning the register wipe clean or is it the parliament that has to do it by passing a law and by what law is this being done you might not have asked these questions but a lot of people did ask these questions and took it to the supreme court the court took its own sweet time of course in january this year which is 6 years after demonetization a five judge bench ruled that demonetization was legal but there was one dissenting opinion Justice Nagaratna disagreed. She said the majority judgment does not recognize the essential fact that the act does not envisage initiation of demonetization of bank notes by the central government. The measure of demonetization ought to have been carried out by the central government by the way of enacting an act or plenary legislation meaning according to her the central government can't just write a letter to the rbi saying that the currency can be abolished they have to take permission from the parliament by passing a law first the parliament actually acted on this way later in february 2017 and that was to wipe out the rbi liability using a law that i just told you about earlier you know burning the register that was a law that burned the register another thing justice nagaratna said that the objectives of the central board of the rbi was to incentivize digital payments and financial inclusion but the government's objective was to tackle black money counterfeiting and illegal financing that's a contradiction but anyway this doesn't matter the other four judges said that the central government is allowed to do this and it is all good they declared demonetization legal so what i say or even a single judge says doesn't really hold any water anymore in all of this the point i'm trying to make is that narendra modi has successfully managed to hack the brains of citizens through moves like demonetization the fact that 1.4 billion people just took his word and literally scrapped their personal money which was in their pockets without a shred of doubt shows you what our society has actually become brainless zombies they trust the authority and will not question it if you question it then the majority will just shut you up by saying have faith in modi ji jo bhi kiya hai acche ke liye hi ko kiya hoga kiya hoga acche ke liye hi karte hai sab kuch modi ji wake up wake up you f- wake the f- up on november 8th at 5:30 pm that is two and a half hours before modi's great declaration the rbi and the government had an emergency meeting this meeting was attended by urjit patel the governor of rbi back then what happened in that meeting was a mystery RTI activists tried to find out by asking the RBI for minutes of that meeting but the RBI responded with this RBI cites threat to life national security as Modi's note ban mystery deepens it is very perplexing that the RBI doesn't answer questions about how the decision was arrived at said Sheelan Shah Singapore based Indian economist at Capital Economics there are concerns that in the whole process the RBI has been sidelined by the government and that raises questions about its independence he said adding that authorities have not been transparent this was way back in 2017 and then 2 years later in 2019 the RBI responded to another RTI and revealed what really happened turns out Central bankers had no clue that demonetization was going to happen till 5:30 p.m. that day. 
neither did any of the ministers except arun jaitley the finance minister and maybe our og comedian anil bokel but that's all just speculation anyway at that meeting the government put forward its agenda for demonetization and said they have three major objectives one cash is used for black money so remove it two 400 crore rupees worth counterfeit money was circulating in india remove that number three reduce the amount of cash in the economy because it has just grown too much the rbi responded to all of this by saying one Guys, uh, black money is mostly held in kind of land or gold, not cash. It's not the 1960s where you hide cash under the bed or whatever. Removing cash will not remove black money, you guys. Number two, 400 crore counterfeit money is just uh, 0.02% of the total cash in circulation. So it, it's kind of uh, insignificant, so pointless. Number 3 Also removing cash like this suddenly from the economy will turn out to be an absolute freaking shit show what is wrong with you people ha huh? it will end our economy you want to like what murder our economy or what what is even happening Okay I'm paraphrasing a little bit because bureaucratic language is kind of dull but yeah mota mota the rbi expressed concerns about this whole thing before demonetization happened and the government just uh, chose to ignore it because why not modi appeared on tv at 8 pm and did it anyway who cares what central bankers that literally print our money are saying you know the people who maintain ledgers and bank documents and also keep a track of all the money circulating in india at any given point of time I, I, they don't need to know they don't need to know because modi ji knows the best am i right yeah he didn't know the best because the fallout of this whole thing was bad i'm going to take you through some numbers with some snazzy beats that you can dance to and vishwaguru again yes in the last episode you liked vishwaguru so i'm bringing him back okay let's go reason for demonetization number 1 it will get rid of corruption did it no it didn't Transparency International's Corruption Perception Index had ranked India at 76 in 2015. In 2021, it fell to 86. Reason number two: It will reduce cash in the economy. Hashtag Digital India. Did that happen? Currency in circulation was 17.7 lakh crore in 2016. In 2023, it is 32.4 lakh crore. That's an increase of 83% since demonetization. Wild times. Cash withdrawals from ATM are up 235% since 2016. 235%. Reason number three: Shady people with black money will not deposit the money. They will just burn it or do something with it. They will not deposit the money. Also, also counterfeit currency will just go away. Really? Okay, let's see. Ninety-nine point three percent of demonetized currency was returned back to banks. In 2022, counterfeit 500 rupee notes more than doubled than the previous year, and 2000 rupee fake notes were up by 54%. Government agencies have seized almost 250 crore rupees worth fake notes till 2022. Reason number 4, it will reduce terrorism. Fatalities in Kashmir continue to go up even after demonetization. In 2016 we had 267 deaths, in 2018 it went up to 452 and in 2021 it was at 321 deaths. Just for comparison in 2012, 4 years before demonetization, the deaths were at 121.
रीजन नंबर फाइव इफ मोर मनी इज इन बैंक गवर्नमेंट विल गेट मोर टैक्स बिकॉज व्हाइट मनी In 2016, the government was collecting 105% gross tax revenue when compared to budget estimates. In 2021, it fell to 78%. So, no, even that didn't work out. Uh, thank you very much for all of this, Modi ji. I think we are done with this sequence. In India till 2016 it is estimated that half of our economy was informal meaning it was operating on cash they were businesses that were doing everything in cash and didn't really interact much with the banking system in one swoop modi removed 86% of the currency that this system was operating on it's like withdrawing all the blood from a human body and then putting it on a drip feed of with a blood bag to replace the old blood the body went into shock quite obviously it is estimated that close to 95 lakh people lost their jobs due to this there was a 5% drop in labor force participation which means about 4.7 crore people withdrew from the workforce after demonetization the modi government made another shock announcement with the goods and service tax GST which overhauled our entire indirect tax system and how markets work as a result an RBI study in 2018 found that micro small and medium enterprises MSMEs have been adversely hit by GST and demonetization together more than 100 people lost their lives standing in line thousands of MSME units were just shut down and estimated 15 crore daily wage workers were affected directly you know what enough numbers i think it's time to tell you a few stories which kind of captures how horrible this whole thing was October 2021 a 70 year old man named Chinakkanu walked into the collectorate office in Krishna Nagar Tamil Nadu he took out a wad of old currency notes from a green plastic bag and was seeking help to get them exchanged Chinakkanu was blind he had collected 65000 rupees over the years by begging that was his life saving in his hand and he was desperate he had forgotten where he had kept the amount for the last few years due to an ailment and could not change the notes as he was unaware that demonetization even happened he requested the authorities to help convert the demonetized notes into the latest currency chinakkanu had only 300 rupees left the last of his savings and was worried about how he would find food once he ran out a reserve bank official said that there was no possibility of exchange since the old notes were not legal since march 2017 fade to black Mujammil Khan was an auto driver in Kasganj Uttar Pradesh when Modi appeared at 8 pm and cancelled all of his cash 39 year old Khan was confused about what to do next he ran to the nearby ATM and queued outside to exchange old currency for new ones but the ATM shutter was lowered in one fell swoop leaving everyone outside desperate he tried again 2 days later after he heard that the atms now have new money after standing for 2 hours in the crowd the atm ran out of money he went again the next day no luck then the next for the third time he stood in line after standing for 2 hours in the line he collapsed on the ground mujammil was rushed to the hospital but was declared dead when he arrived Mujammil's wife Begum had to take up the mantle of the family and start working as a tailor. She couldn't afford to send her two kids to school, so they dropped out. Taufik, her second son, now works at a roadside food stall helping his mother earn a living. The food stall sells pakoras. Fade to black. Sixty-four-year-old Ramchandra Paswan got up on the 9th of November 
and he was nervous. His granddaughter was getting married in the next few weeks and expenses were mounting. He was a retired miner living on pension. He had to go withdraw his pension from the nearby SBI branch in Mohammad Ganj of Jharkhand. Paswan stood in line on the 10th to withdraw money. No luck. He went again and again and again. The queues were so long that he would return empty-handed every day. On November 16th, after standing for hours in the queue, Paswan collapsed outside the bank. Before his family could arrive, he was already dead. His wife, Devi, said that they had moved up the wedding because Paswan was so excited to see his granddaughter getting married. The family lost their only source of income that day. Now the family has to survive by doing casual labor in and around their village. Fade to f black. Thirty-year-old Poonam Kumari lived with her two boys in Nawada, Jharkhand. She was a single woman who worked at a local NGO and earned two thousand rupees a month. After demonetization, she saw chaos outside the banks and was relieved. that she had 3 months worth of cash reserves left she went to the market and found some shopkeepers that were still willing to accept old cash so she kept doing that but then shops stopped accepting old cash she had no money left to feed her boys aged 6 and 4 punam went to the bank repeatedly and stood in line but within a few hours the bankers would come out and announce that the money was over and the exchange counter was closed time was running out desperate she gave the money to a villager to get it exchanged he tried a few times but wasn't able to do that either the deadline passed leaving punam with 6000 rupees in old cash then punam did something which she never thought she would do she set the cash on fire 3 months of work went up in flames in an instant fade to mother fucking black we interrupt this program to read out a fun paragraph from the court judgment on demonetization utterly gobsmacked at these six words in the demonetization judgment though the court found that the act caused a serious hardship it held that the act is a valuable piece of social legislation it held that the act was enacted to implement one of the most important constitutional directives contained in part 4 of the constitution of india it further observed that if in this process a few individuals suffer severe hardship that cannot be helped it further held that the individual interests must yield to the larger interests of the community or the country as indeed every noble cause claims its martyr and now back to the stories april 2017 40 year old meenakshi is gesticulating wildly to her family members panic is written large all over her face she was deaf and dumb and had just realized that she would lose all her saved money due to demonetization Minakshi worked as a domestic help and earned 1500 rupees a month. After months of hard work, she had saved up 1 lakh 39000 rupees in cash and hid it in her room. When demonetization happened, her brother came up to her to ask whether she had any old cash lying around. Minakshi was wary about revealing how much money she had saved up. So, she just said no. She had no idea what she was doing back then. In April, one of her employers sat her down and explained that all her old cash is now worthless. Shook to the core, Minakshi rushed home to gather all her money and started to plead with anyone and everyone to help her. She was saving the money to buy some jewelry for herself and eventually invest in property. And since she did not have a bank account, she was just stashing all of it as cash her family and friends tried their best to exchange the money but no luck narendra modi had taken all her money and made it worthless on november 8 2016 modi made sure that minakshi's years and years of hard work was worth 
nothing fade to black See I can keep going like this I have six more stories that I have collected through a casual google search you can do it too and these are all reported stories by the way I know you have a demonetization story of your own so do I it was a disruptive event that affected each and every one of us I remember standing in a bank line all day on my freaking birthday because if I didn't I wouldn't be able to pay rent and might become homeless. Fortunately, leather jacket clad cool landlord of mine managed to find one of these corrupt bankers who, you know, helped him exchange all of his money. So, he didn't put much pressure on me after that, after a month. I did have to stand in line for 6 days to get the money deposited and exchanged though. There was no getting away from that. And This didn't teach my landlord a lesson or anything. He still wanted the rent in cash, just in new cash. If you have a story of your own, I would love to hear it. Leave a comment below. I decided to do this episode of Modi Review for one simple reason. I don't want to forget and I don't want you to forget either. Demonetization was an absolute shit show. There is no denying that. It was an idea that some mechanical engineer came up with and some megalomaniac implemented without consulting anyone without realizing what he was doing and it ended up ruining lakhs and lakhs of lives and for what nothing zilch nada zero never forget oh yeah and guess what 7 years later people are being made to stand in queues all over again to exchange their 2000 rupee notes because why not modi ji ne kiya hai to kuch soch samajh ke hi kiya hoga no like he does everything very thoughtfully and thinking only no fuck everything fade to black just fade to black Thank you so much for watching this episode of Modi Review friends uh, this is the third episode if you have not seen the last ones i will leave a link below episode 1 and episode 2 is in the link below episode 1 was about brand modi and how his features don't work in government and a bunch of other stuff and the second episode is on vishwaguruness india is not a vishwaguru surprise and it is also about make in india and how it didn't work so yeah please do check out those two episodes please do support the channel by liking this sharing this and also becoming a member if you like the content that i'm making please do consider becoming a member and uh, i will see you in the live streams that i do yeah i hope you enjoyed this episode until next time bye bye